So I did quite a lot of stuff with tribal electric nano generation, and we'll look at what that is in a minute. But whenever I do that, I get a whole bunch of people going, well, that's rubbish, that doesn't produce much, that's no use to me, move on. Well, what I have to say without wanting to gloat too much about it is that opinion is utterly wrong. It's about not thinking about it when you come up with those kind of statements. So what I'm going to show you is why that's wrong and how it can be used to improve solar output dramatically. But first things first, what is triboelectric nanogeneration? Triboelectrification is that electrification of different materials that you get just by rubbing them together. Tribo is Greek for rub. So if you rub two materials together, they will create electricity. Of course, this is really well known, and it's being investigated for the creation of generators, nanogenerators, energy scavenging, and energy harvesting to run the Internet of Things. It's a super interesting topic that has lots of great application. Now, some materials will create a positive charge, and some materials will create a negative charge, just because they're of affinity for electrons. For example, this, which is polyethylene tetrathalate, or you might know it as sheet acetate, is tribopositive. So if I rub this against something that is tribonegative, this will collect a positive charge. This is kapton, and kapton is tribonegative. So if I rub those two together, I'll get a very high positive charge on here, and a very high negative charge on there. Now they are electrostatic generators, and we've made quite a few on the channel, including a dippy bird that will generate, and a flag that waves in the wind that will generate. And others like Blade Attila have done an awesome job of this, and the links are in the description if you're interested in those videos. But being electrostatic generators, they tend to generate quite high electrostatic charges, and that might seem pretty useless at first. But let's put that to one side and have a look at what MIT did a couple of years ago. These are two metal plates. If you create an electrostatic charge between them, these dust particles or sand particles will be repelled from one plate onto the next plate. MIT took this idea with a solar panel that they sprinkled with sand, and then when they passed the charged plate across it, the sand was repelled. The solar panel is covered with zinc oxide so that the charge can be created between the two plates. This is cleaning it without water. If you tried to do this by brushing it, you're effectively sandpapering the surface, and that will degrade the solar panel very much more quickly. And of course, not using water is an important issue in many parts of the world, creating a self-cleaning panel. Of course, dust and dirt on solar panels is a real issue. It dramatically decreases the performance of them, and so solar parks utilise a lot of manpower and water to keep those things clean. And of course, using a lot of water is not such a good idea, because an awful lot of these solar farms are in deserts where water is a premium. So we have a problem. And we have a kind of solution. So the problem is dust on solar panels. The sort of solution is electrostatics. MIT gave it a stamp with the system that we've just seen, but it has its issues. One thing is that it's mechanical. And of course, anything that's mechanical adds costs and adds breakdown possibility. And it's probably one of the reasons it hasn't really been adopted. So what we need here is a better mousetrap. And that's exactly what this team from South Korea did. Now, I'll put the link to the paper in the description of the video, but the paper is behind a paywall in this case. So that's most unfortunate, but the paper is there. Now, I think there were two innovations here. The first one was instead of having a plate pass across the top, like we saw in MIT, what they did was lay electrodes in the actual glass, and the field was formed between the two electrodes, and so there was no top plate, and so no mechanical movement. And of course, once you put the electrostatic field in there, the dust and sand is forced away from the surface of the solar cell. The other innovation that they did harks back to the beginning of this video. In order to create that electrostatic charge, they used a wind-driven triboelectric nanogenerator, which I thought was a work of genius. In fact, both of those, I thought, were works of genius. Okay, so that paper came out, I think it was uh, 13th of March, something like that. It's very new. And so I wanted to report on it because it's also very interesting. But this video goes a little bit further. There's also a moral to this story, which you might have got from the beginning that there would be at the end. But there's a moral. 
What you should notice here in this innovation, invention in action is that a few things happened. We had a problem. We had a solution. We needed a better mousetrap and that came along by looking at two widely disparate areas of study where you might think that one had no application in the other. And of course it turns out that they do. And so often genius and invention is about doing that. When you see something that you think, hmm, that doesn't apply here, don't throw it away. That's a baby out with the bathwater mentality. Store it in the back of your head. Have a think about what it could be used for and how it might be useful somewhere else. And that is actually how we solve so many of our problems. Because, of course, this electrostatic charge is used all over the place. It's used for painting, it's used for air purification, and it's used to run fluorescent lights. It's a really important effect that doesn't get enough attention. And when it's given attention, suddenly it can be the solution to a problem and that's so often the case. Anyway, I wanted to share that new research with you and that little moral point. I hope I didn't gloat too much and that you enjoyed the video and please do remember to like and subscribe.